Uh, it comes as probably no surprise to anyone in this chamber that I rise to support this bill. I've listened all day long to people talk about why we're doing this bill. I can only tell you why I am doing this bill. I came here in 2009 as a state legislator, having made a promise to people that I would always fight for justice. And I've listened to the debate, and I've heard this word justice talked about all day long. But I know the history of not only this country, but this state. And I know what the Supreme Court has said to us. In 1987, there was a case, McCluskey versus Kemp. And in this case, it was brought before the Supreme Court that there were disparities in our system, disparities based on race, where people who look like me would get a different type of justice from the majority population. And our Supreme Court didn't actually say that there weren't disparities. What our Supreme Court said was, we understand that there are disparities, but it's okay. And we call that justice when we're talking about life or death. I don't call that justice. People said that we have come here and told a lie to the people of the state. I think from the beginning of my efforts to, appeal, to abolish the death penalty, I've said that I am for full abolishment of the death penalty. And that if I had my way, we would have no death penalty for everyone, including the 11, that this bill will leave on death row. I've been absolutely clear about that. But the reality is that I am in a room with 150 other people. And I'm not, not so young that I believe that my opinion is the penultimate opinion and that I know everything. And so I recognize coming here that part of what we do here is we figure out how do we make things happen. It's not a scheme, it's the way things operate here. And in 2009 when I attempted to completely abolish the death penalty, I came to the realization that the only way to move forward was with a bill that was prospective. And I have to tell you that when I came to that realization, I did not like it. I did not want to do that because, as some have said earlier, I felt like I'm a purist and we should just move forward with complete abolition. But I realized something. There is nothing wrong with being opposed to the state executing people and saying, if I can't get the state to stop executing, uh, people that are already on death row, at least I can stop the state from executing people that may be on death row in the future. There's nothing wrong with that. It makes perfect sense. It's logical. What is illogical is to say to a person who is opposed to the death penalty, you have the chance to stop the state from moving forward. But because you can't stop the state from dealing with those who it's already put through its system, you do nothing. Being a purist sometimes is not a good thing. I have heard that retribution moves us towards justice. But if I were to walk into, here, into this place and tell you that if someone stabbed another person, we should stab that person, you would think I was crazy. If I were to walk into this place and tell you if someone raped someone, we should rape that person, you would think I was crazy. But when it comes to killing a person who has committed a heinous crime, some of us are fine with that. And we wonder why our society views death the way that it does. I don't wonder, I know. I want to talk to you about people who've committed heinous crimes, but that aren't on death row, because I hear people oftentimes talk about people who've committed heinous crimes but they are the people on death row. And they talk to us about the crimes they have committed. But there are people who have committed capital felonies, who have been convicted of kidnapping, raping, and murdering people. There are people 
who have committed heinous crimes, who've murdered five-year-olds, their own children, with a shotgun. There are people who've killed people with the children at the scene of the crime. The majority of people who've committed the worst of the worst crimes are not on death row. And we call that justice. And so you could, as Attorney Kane, when he came before the Judiciary Committee, tell us, well, there are different circumstances because these are different cases. And maybe we can make the case and maybe we can't make the case. And so I looked at Attorney Kane and I asked him a question. I said, I get that. And I recognize that. But tell me how you can have an Evo Cologne. How you can seek the death penalty for Evo Cologne. And when you have an issue with the case and the case comes back around, you don't seek the death penalty and you call that justice. There's no difference in that case. There's no different set of facts. The death penalty is the death penalty, but the death penalty does not equal justice. Because if the death penalty equal justice, then all of those other cases that we talk about, we would not have justice. Death, justice is not resident in the death penalty. And let me say another thing. If we truly understand a death penalty and how it works, we understand that there must be instances where someone has committed the worst of the worst. And it's possible that someone could have committed the very worst crime and still not get the death penalty. Because there is a penalty phase in which we, want, we must weigh mitigating factors. And in order for the penalty phase to be what it should be, in order for us to be doing what we should be doing, there must exist the possibility that even if it's the worst crime ever committed, that individual doesn't get the death penalty. And still that would be justice. people have talked about the victims. I've spoken to a lot of victims. In 2009, I started off worried about the victims, I think, more than anything else, because I knew my position was to abolish the death penalty. And I knew that there were some, including Dr. Pettit, who didn't agree with my position. And so before I said a word, I tried to figure out what do you do about those people? And the night before the first hearing we had, I did not sleep. And I went in and the first thing I talked about was Dr. Pettit and his case. And people told me, don't mention Dr. Pettit. But I think it is the responsibility of those of us here, whichever side we're on, to realize that there are people who agree with us and don't agree with us. And I think that is not only the responsibility of people on my side, but people on the other side. We have heard victims brought up over and over. But if you look up in the galley, there are people who had very terrible things happen to family members, who have come to this building asking us to repeal the death penalty. And the reality is, some of them have not had an audience. If we're going to talk about talking to the victims, we have to talk to all of the victims. They are not a monolith. This is not about one, one, the victims believe X or Y. They're all over the place just like the people in this chamber. This is not about the polls. This is about who we are and what we believe. I'm not going to be long. We walked in here today, walked through those doors, men, women, for, against, black, white, all kinds of different things we walked in. We walked in and talked to each other. We were together. And as every speaker has spoken today, the hour of our departure from being together has drawn closer. Some of us will depart and vote green. Some of us will depart and vote red. All that I ask is that you consider who we are, that you consider the facts, that you make a tough decision based not on the opinion you walked in with, based not on your ideology, but based on justice, real justice, and based on the responsibility we have to the